definitely not instrumental. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? My name is Kyle Davidson. Uh, thank you for joining us. And we're about to do a live presentation from TA Kitchener, Ontario. I'm joined by the cameraman, Dylan Mendonca. Thank you so much for joining us. Dylan is going to be relaying any questions you might have. So when you see the chat, please, oh, please, participate. We love questions. We love live interactions. And Dylan's going to relay the questions to me, so I'll be able to fulfill everything you guys need to know. Uh, somebody give me a heart if you can hear me okay and everything sounds good. No hearts. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's probably okay. Um, is the, uh, the mic at the bar? There we go. Thank you, guys. See? It's a very efficient system. LG listens. This is going to be a theme that we're going to get into in a bit. Uh, I've been told to wait a little bit to let some people climb on the call. So while we're waiting, just going to give you a little rundown of what we're doing today. We're going to be highlighting two of our appliances, our range and also our fridge. If you join us next week, we'll be doing dish and laundry. But for this week, this lovely setup that Dylan and I put together is going to show you some really amazing things and two of the best features LG has brought to the table. Literally, this table right here. And we'll be showing you some of those in just a little bit. So guys, hang tight. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and in the meantime, don't forget, participation. Please, oh please, won't you ask us some questions? Dylan will relay them for me. And Dan Forrester is going to be manning the chat. And in there, he'll be able to provide links and pictures that you guys can click on. And at that point, it'll direct you to any product information that may pertain to what I'm speaking about. Thanks again, guys. Got some jazzy hip hop going. I'm not sure what you're, you guys can hear it or not. Yeah. We're going to have some fun. Beautiful craft ice. No, don't spoil the surprise. <laughs> We're going to be doing a couple of live things. We can't really cook and get accomplished what we need today. But with the help of a little bit of TV magic, I'm sure it's going to be good. And again, in TA Kitchener, we've got some live um, consultants. Consultants, sales associates helping out customers right now. So this is the original uh, TA appliances. If my Google search doesn't mistake me, they've been around since 1905. So guys, the reason that we're here too is because we're doing a big sale with TA. LG and TA have partnered for this weekend and for the subsequent week. And we're going to be doing a save the tax promotion, which you'll see right here. It's a dealer day special in honor of our partnership with TA. LG and TA are getting together, save you guys tax. So it's a great opportunity to come in. And that's why we've got a lot of foot traffic in the store already. It's a lovely store. Um, looks like it was like a mill that was like returned or reinvented into like this beautiful showroom. So definitely worth coming by. What do you think? Good to go? Okay, guys. So again, my name is Kyle Davidson. Sorry about that. Uh, and this is Dylan Mendonca. So we're from LG. We're part of the training team. But we're also just big advocates of a lot of the innovations that LG has brought to the table. So today we're going to be talking about two marquee features. The first is Air Sous Vide. Now this is a feature that's now available in LG ranges only. And I'll be giving you a breakdown about how that's possible and what exactly Sous Vide is if you don't know. But a lot of Canadians are becoming very familiar with Sous Vide because... Canadians are the most multicultural people in the world. We're the most epicurious. Always introduced to new foods, new cooking methods. And because of that, you're probably familiar with things like um, Starbucks and their egg bites. If you haven't had one, the sous vide egg bites there are fantastic. It changes when you see sous vide food. It changes the way the tenderness, the flavor, the texture. It just makes the feeling so expressed, right? It's a really nice way to infuse your dishes too. So we are going to be covering that. Otherwise... We also have craft ice. Now, this is probably LG's most prolific feature in fridges, and there's a couple of great reasons why. So today, we're going to shake up a couple of mocktails for you guys. Uh, we're going to do a peppermint matcha green Irish gimlet, and then also a hazy oasis. Two beautiful drinks that you guys are really going to like. Um, and I've got beautiful craft ice hibernating in here for now. And at the risk of letting all that ice melt, I'm still going to start with the sous vide in the range because I'm going to give you a bit of a history lesson. And nobody likes an unsolicited history lesson, but just like Alfred Hitchcock said, if you want to hold someone's attention during a conversation, first introduce a bomb under the table, and then everything they said has merit. Well, 
We don't have a bomb under the table, and we're certainly not making vertigo or north by northwest here. But that ice slowly. So I have to make sure that absolutely, positively, every word I say is necessary. Okay, so if you're not familiar with sous vide, you may be, but this is how it works. Essentially, you seal your food in an airtight bag, and typically what's done is you submerge it in water. The reason most people use water now is because water is able to hold its temperature consistency without too much fluctuation. When it comes to buying a sous vide appliance, you can spend anywhere from $50 to $1,000 on a handheld item that will go into a large hot water bath and then you know, maintain that temperature consistency. The beautiful thing about sous vide is you set it and forget it. And once it's re reached the desired temperature, you have perfect results that are repeatable every time. And because it's sealed in the bag, all those flavors have been infused. You've lost none of the nutrients. You've lost none of the flavor. It's a really great way to prepare food. So besides just Starbucks, Michelin star restaurants, they often sous vide food. Um, they do what I tried to do today with one of my dishes, which is you sear a steak first sometimes. There's differing methods on how to do this. And then you place it in the bag. And if you've seared it first, it'll lock in all the flavor while it cooks in that bag. So that's one thing we're going to do. I'm also going to walk you through um, a pepper recipe that I put together that I think is really nice. LG, on our field team, is very lucky to have a Red Seal certified chef on our team. I, however, am not that chef. I'm the guy you're getting today. <laughs> so I'm also a very big food enthusiast and used to bartend too, so I put together these mocktails for you guys. And without further ado, let's get into it. So sous vide in a range. We're going to talk about the history of ranges. So when ranges first came out, and some still do, they have an exposed element, which is that squiggly line you see get red hot right at the bottom. So it was great, but what would happen is food would drip down, and it would land on that element, and then it would start to smoke and smolder. No bueno. So they came up with a new idea, which was the hidden element. And then they put a cover over top of that uh, element to basically prevent it from getting spills and drips. The problem, of course, then becomes you have a middleman between your heat source and your food. So next they go, okay. Next thing we'll do is we'll add a fan. So that's what they did. And they added a fan, and that's what you come to know as convection. Now, the whole point of the fan was to help move heat from underneath that hidden element or that uh, barrier, but this could be made. So next, they added another element around the fan. Now, here we have the gas range, which inside does have fire and BTUs, but because we're talking about CV, use your imagination, pretend it's electric. So what they did was, well, this is great. That's a 700 watt element adding power to what's already established in the bottom under that hidden element. However, what you had then was dueling heat sources. One coming up, one going inside. And while dueling is great for things like banjos and, and movie speech, not as good in range for temperature consistency. Thus, LG pioneered probate technology. And that's currently what we have in this and in our electric range, the LSEL6337. This is basically where we take the bottom heating element out and add a waste. So instead of a 700 watt element, we're putting a 2500 watt element around the fan. Why this is important to know is now with this one powerful heat source, the only heat source, we're able to maintain temperature consistency better than everyone. And that is how we have a superior air fry and a superior technology in sous vide. So you seal your food, you put it inside, and you read the manual usually to get a good idea of how long to cook it, set it, and forget it. Really beautiful. Um, any questions at all? Please feel free to fire away. Got a lot of information, but a lot of fun to have. If not, let's get into the cooking. And everyone's still hearing me okay? Beauty. I'm going to take that as a yes. Okay. So this is an idea I came up with the other day. Um, it's going to be a sous vide stuffed pepper, but vegan and keto compatible. So first, I'm going to take off the top of the pepper. Easy peasy. And I'll save that for the side. I'm just going to remove the inside here. And drop it below. Okay. Now I've pre-arranged some of these things just to make this easier. And the first one I'm going to start with is our cauliflower rice. So I'm going to throw a little bit of that in here. 
Now, I've only got one pepper here, so I'm not going to add too, too much. I think that'll probably be enough. I try all sorts of different diets, keto, vegan, vegetarian, whatever you got. I'll try it all. It helps. I'm very epicurious. It's really a really good way to discover new food. So this is some chopped onions I prepared beforehand. Really strong smell of that Spanish onion. Woo! And this is some tomato and seasoning and some garlic. I've also put some polo picante in there and a little bit of fresh herbs. Yeah, a little bit more of that in. Beauty. Finally, some chopped mushrooms. Not too much. I, I like mushrooms, but I don't like when they take over the flavor. And I'm just going to stir that all up. We have a question here. Fire away. Does the sous vide come in a wall oven? Yes and no. It will be coming in our studio wall ovens. So we have another lineup by LG called Studio, and that will have the sous vide in the wall ovens, along with a host of other features. I would definitely recommend talking to someone at TA about that sort of thing because, I mean, they've been doing this since 1905. Your appliances are usually your third biggest purchase for most Canadians behind a home and a vehicle. So when it comes to a big purchase like that, I usually trust the experts and I come consult with somebody like that here. But yeah, they'd be happy to tell you about it if they come on in. One of those ovens is also a combi oven with a steam cooker on top that does something called turbo cook, which is fantastic. So easy peasy. I'm just going to stuff this pepper. And now all you do, see this is a very healthy dish too. Not a lot of oil. I did put a little bit in there, but it's pretty healthy. It's got no, nothing that could really hurt you there. Only stuff that can help you. So. Typically, I'll stuff the pepper. I I'll think I'll try, but the size of the bag I tried it to buy, let's see if it works out. So I'm going to turn on my sealer here. Oh, yeah, forgot to mention. If you want to grab one of these sealers, not very expensive, and they're good for a variety of purposes, whether you're storing food for long periods of time or just want to marinate a steak. Of course, then, if you want a sous vide, it's right there to use in the bag as well. So I'm going to drop my pepper into the bag. Oh, she's stuck all right. Let's see how I do here. May have to lose the top of our pepper. So real simple. And the reason I'm also showing you this vacuum sealer is because we've had it now for, I don't know, maybe six months. And uh, my partner couldn't figure it out. And I just showed her yesterday. Like, oh. So I'm like, this will probably just be a useful tutorial to anybody. So I'm going to pop it open. Anyway, this is the one I have. And then you're going to want to put the seal in there. Yeah, as I thought, I'm going to need to lose the top of that pepper. But it's not going to matter, is it? It's still sealed anyway. Beauty of sous vide, eh? And then you put it in here. And see how we do. Closed. Vacuum seal. Oop, I missed. Retry. Oh, yeah, this way. Here we go. It's a big pepper in a small bag. I should have brought more than one bag, but, you know, you'll be learning we had that Red Seal Chef, maybe. All right, let's see what we do. <laughs> well, in theory, then, it seals it. And uh, after that, oh, there we go. It's going to finish, and it's literally going to turn the sealant on and just burn a hole in the bag or uh, across the top. There's your stuffed pepper. OK. Now, sous vide, obviously one of our best features in our ranges, but of course, you know about air fry. I mean, this has become a multi-billion dollar industry, the air fry industry, another countertop appliance that you can go and buy separately along with a sous vide, along with a, a juicer, along with a blender, along with a spice grinder, along with one of those giant mixers. These are all a lot of countertop appliances. The beauty of our ranges is we put them all in here. So we have air fry, we have sous vide in our ranges, and that's unique to us. So. I think we're anticipating that with a lot of these features becoming more and more popular, a lot of people are going to want to put them in their ranges as opposed to, you know, lose a lot of that counter space. Okay. Well, I think next we'll do our mocktails. So, glassware. Oops, let me not block this beautiful craft ice here. 
Now the good thing about craft ice, before I get too much into it, is typically, and I worked in restaurants for years, when you're making craft ice, there's a lot of handling that has to go on if you're using a mold. You know, you got to fill it with water and you got to go put it in the fridge. Then you got to pop them out after, sometimes transfer them to different bins and stuff. With our craft ice in our InstaView fridge, it's very simple. The water fills into the bottom of the fridge and it's a pharmaceutical grade filter. So pure, clean tasting water and it goes directly into the bottom of the fridge. So less chance of contamination, less chance of getting your hands dirty or your ice dirty, and a pure looking ice. So I'll get into some interesting things about the Think You technology, which is our. So first things first, I made this mistake a couple times in my life. Put the ice in first. If you don't put the ice in first, when you put it in afterwards, you get a cannonball. Woo! So I think first I'm gonna do the hazy oasis. Luckily, I have put what I need in my fridge right here. This is the InstaView fridge. Grab and go items available for me here. I'm gonna teach you how to make a really nice drink. Do you have a question? Yeah, we have a question yes. from, uh, from Phil. Does the fridge make regular ice as well? Thank you for the question, Phil. Thank you very much. Yep, it absolutely does. So in the fridge door, also with our um, Slim Space Plus, we'll be making ice available in the door. This is how we get such good capacity, usable space inside of our fridges. So that's one. You can always also toggle off the craft ice feature if maybe you're having a party where you need more crushed ice and you can actually fill the bottom bin with regular ice from there and then continue to refill the door itself. But here you will have the cubed and crushed options as well. Cool, thanks Phil. Um, okay, so grab some ice here. Now typically I, I chill the glass, but I'm not going to go through all that right yet. And let me grab my ingredients. I'm going to start with three types of juice. Peach, pineapple, and mango. I'm also going to add some lemon juice and four mocktails. I found something that's very good to do because obviously when it comes to a cocktail, there's liquor involved, and liquor has that strong taste that sometimes floral can really carry, you know, the notes of whatever else is in the drink. So it helps to brew cold tea beforehand. So this is a pomegranate raspberry tea. Kind of does the job of, uh, of a liquor inside of a mocktail. So really nice. Pre-brewed that yesterday. And then my final ingredient is here. Cranberry juice. First things first, I'm going to pour some of this tea in our shaker. We're making two drinks, that should be enough. After that, I'm going to add, I don't want to forget the lemon juice, I always forget, so I'm going to add that first. Just a squeeze, nothing crazy, but I want to cut that sugar. Because there's going to be basically three types of sugar in this drink. That goes below. Hi. Oops, sorry, probably should take those down. A little bit of peach juice, nothing crazy. We got our healthy pepper, we don't want to have all that sugar. Pineapple juice, actually, let me give this one a good shake. Pineapple juice, you gotta shake a lot. Not that it's not gonna get a shake anyway. All right. Oh, these are gonna be good. Mango juice. Mango juice is gonna help with the second part of this drink. All right. Which is layering it. See, great stuff. Okay. Shake it all up. So there's two ways to shake. People say, T shake for 10 seconds. I usually shake until it's too cold to hold. Okay, that is pretty cold. So, that little trick here. Comes off nice and easy. All right. Oh my god, these are so good. Okay. I hear what you're saying though. It's it's oasis-y, but where's the haze? Well, give me a second. Now you add the, let me come over to your side, cranberry juice. Now you tilt. And 
and see how we did. Almost done. Garnish. Maybe a straw. What do you think? Oh, yeah. It's nice, right? It tastes even better. Metal straws were being environmentally friendly. And for this, maybe I'm crazy. But I'm actually going to put sage. Whew, very floral. So there you have it. Those are the Hazy Oasis drinks. Thank you, Dylan. Do you want to try it, Dylan? <laughs> it's like going right here, guy. You want some? Wow. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, let me set these off to the side. So, while well, I've got your attention, a couple other things about our fridges. LG, year over year, is going to decorate the top of the charts in Consumer Reports. Reliability, performance, cooling, efficiency, always Energy Star certified. You know, we're just, we're that brand that's really pushing the envelope. So if you look on Consumer Reports, which many believe to be the most reputable publication, you're gonna see our names all over the top of the charts there. And there's a good reason why. Now, people don't like a unsolicited science lesson any more than unsolicited history lesson, but you're gonna get one anyway. Part of the reason why our fridges are so good is because of our inverter linear compressor. Now, most fridges, their compressor, which is basically the engine of the fridge, the thing that compresses warm air into cold air for the cooling, most compressors are a reciprocal compressor. So they work kind of like the engine of a steam train. And as they pump back and forth, they compress the air to cool it. However, with that much action going on, there's a lot of moving parts, there's a lot of friction points, and ultimately it suffers durability. And so our solution to that was make it more simple. So our inverter linear compressor is just a piston back and forth. And it's more durable, it's more efficient, it's quieter, and it's also more energy efficient. Oh, I said that one already. It's another thing, too. It's all sorts of things. Um, so that's part of the reason we have this incredible durability in our fridges. Um, otherwise, just another smart feature to point out, door cooling. Not everyone opens a fridge and looks straight up, and it's this ingenious thing that we do that I think is wildly overlooked. So if you want to store contents on your door, why not put a, a vent right there on the front that will keep those cool? The door, you know, has the most temperature swing because you open and close it. So a lot of people don't want to put things like eggs or milk on their door. They want to be able to you put that in the back of the fridge where it's cooler. With Door Cooling Plus, you can put it anywhere. We have another great question. Thanks. What is the warranty like? Tammy's asking. Thanks, Tammy. Um, so, like all manufacturers, LG will give you one year bumper to bumper parts and labor. Then, um, with the compressor, which the sticker is not right there, but the compressor has a 10-year warranty on it. So all of your parts are covered for that compressor, right? That's in line with industry standards. Most companies do that. However, if you come into TA, they also have different options for you. They'll have different warranties that they can provide for you. And LG Service is also a great resource as well. So uh, thank you for the question, Tammy. But uh, if you come on in to any of your TAs, they'd be happy to answer your questions too. Um, okay, where was I? Next mocktail. This one is a special one to me. It's for St. Patrick's Day. So let's get the new glassware going. What goes in first, guys? Don't forget. Crap dice. One. Two. Interesting thing about craft dice is when it first came out, we were able to make six balls of ice every 18 hours. Right? Was it six, Dylan? Three. My bad. Three. Three balls of ice every 18 hours with 90% clarity. Then, when we came up with a new range of fridges, we developed an update where we could update the system to provide six balls of ice every 18 hours at an 80% clarity. Well, rather than disappoint a whole bunch of customers who had bought the first fridge and thought, oh, now I can't get that, and it just came out, you know, it, you know, buy the latest iPhone, the new one comes out, things like that. All we did was update the software through the ThinkQ app. So our ThinkQ app is our smart platform which goes into all of our appliances. There's a whole world of connectivity that provides things that make your appliances effortless and really intuitive and easy to use. In fact, smart is the way a lot of companies are going. And LG is definitely one of those companies that's kind of leading the charge. So, yeah. That's a good point. Jeez, how long have you been like that for? Tammy, you rock. Thank you. Is that better? I think I'm hard. Good? Probably good. Uh, 
Um, yeah, or, or probably was getting a lot of muffled sounds. Sorry about that. Total oversight. Uh, so now what we're talking about is future proofing. Through our Think You app, if we come up with new algorithms, new updates, new software, we can update everything you need. So I think that's one of the things that really sets us apart too in appliances. Okay, enough about that. Let's build our second cocktail. How do I do this again? First, we go to the Instaview. There are my lovely things. Great for entertaining. Guys, this is another thing. We're entertainers. I mean, I'm an entertainer. I like to have people over. It's been a long two years. I think more than ever, Canadians now want to get together. They want to indulge. They want to revel. They want to relish. We want to hang out. And now the restaurants are opening back up. Awesome. Can't wait to go back. But I do feel like there would be a bit of a riptide, and people won't want to come back to where they become such masters of their own domains. People have been really epicurious. They've been trying different dishes. So I've definitely come to love cooking at home, right? And I think um, it's good to go out again, but I do anticipate a bit of a thing. I'll digress. Let me, let me build this cocktail. So this is another tea I brewed. This one is a, oh, yes, a matcha green tea peppermint blend. And this one's pretty simple. We've got lime cordial and lime juice. And where we're going to throw in the curveball-ish is egg whites. Now, a lot of people are like, egg whites. It adds like a frothy, foamy texture. It's tasteless protein that really richens up the drink. So a drink like this, it's going to be great. OK. Uh, do I shake this one? Yes, I do. So let me do this. Oh, there we go. OK. Fill it up with some ice. Okay. Green tea, green tea peppermint matcha. Maybe a little out. That would be fine. So, lime cordial, not too much. It's going to be sweet anyway with this. But it is for two. Eh, what the hell. It's a posture stay. Aaron go bra. Soon enough anyway. Lime juice. Beauty. And the egg whites. Not too much. You don't actually need too much of the stuff. Otherwise, it would be really, really frothy. Okay. Now. Do I have this yet? Yeah, guys. Green food coloring. Really, really makes the drink pop. Looks nice. That probably will do it secret ingredient. I hid that from everyone. All right. Too cold. Too cold. Okay. Now for this one, I think I'm going to pour it manually just because. I want to be able to layer the foam. All right. Here we go. So it will settle as well. You see the matcha? Okay, looking good so far. For this one, I am. Oh my goodness! I forgot one key ingredient that I left here the whole time powdered sugar. That's why it was going to be sweeter. Well, use your imagination. Mint. For me, anyway. I love mint. Fresh mint. The difference between fresh mint and just like any mint is quite a difference. It really needs to be fresh. And voila. That is your matcha green tea Irish mocktail gimlet. Okay. Well, that's our... Uh, craft ice portion. I'm just going to slide these to the side. And really quickly, before we let you guys go, and thank you again so much for sticking with us, I'm going to introduce you to our, well, the dishes that I made yesterday, which I'm very excited to share with my friend Dylan here. little TV magic coming your way. So, like I mentioned, I'll lose that guy. Sous vide is a low and slow and consistent process. And so that's how I did these dishes. Let me see here. First. Oh, we've got to open the bag. Give me one second. And my 
North State. Then I went a little bit over the top. Oh, so here's the, the crab. Oops, I think I got a little barrel. That's the crab. So I did snow crab as well. And with the steaks, I was very simple. Uh, I just did salt and pepper, olive oil, and then dusted it with a little more than my imagination when it came to garlic. But for the crab, I did put some herbs in there as well. And I did put uh, a lot of butter. But it turned out lovely. I love the color. Sous vide is a fantastic way to do crab because it keeps all the flavor inside the shell and it doesn't lose anything. And here's my other steak. Alrighty. Now, I also did carrots. So give me one of these. The carrots I did with sesame seeds, miso, honey, and garlic. And I'm also going to finish them with some sesame seeds. So, not bad for not a Red Seal chef, just someone who's a fan of cooking. Beautiful. In retrospect now, the color of the crab with the carrot may be a little bit much. And finally, thank you, Dylan. I did the mashed potatoes, sorry, well, potatoes, then with garlic and with uh, onions all in the bag together. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, what's going to be a winning product about this is, if you wanted to, they're so soft, you can just mash them afterwards yourself. And so on the plate, then in there, you have mashed potatoes. Sous vide is a very fun way to cook. It's very ritualistic. You start at the beginning of the day, you wait as long as you like, and then you're all done. So there you have it. Guys, thank you again so much for joining us. Um, my name is Kyle Davidson again, and this is Dylan Mendonca. It's been a pleasure to work with uh, Jenna and everyone here at TA Kitchener. Um, feel free to come in. We're doing the Save the Tax, a lot of great LG appliances. Talk to the experts about it. You're in good hands here. Thanks, guys.